IFP's MP Liesl van der Merwe, as you know, has been scathing earlier of the Constitutional Court's decision to grant an extension to CPS. If I remember, that was in March this year. Let me take you live now to Cape Town. Uh, Ms. van der Merwe, good afternoon to you and a very warm welcome. So as far as you're concerned now, is this a good decision? Does this put at least to some extent uh, the matter to bed? Well, Jeremy, of course, one notes and respects the Constitutional Court ruling today, but there's nothing to celebrate um, because at the end of the day, what happened today is that the taxpayer will now again have to foot the bill for, for Sasa's incompetence. It will again have to foot the bill for the former minister's incompetence. And I think it's important to remind ourselves how we got here, and that is that in 2013 already, former minister Batabir Lamini was told by the court that the contract that she holds with Cash Master Pay Services is unlawful. She ignored that court ruling. In 2017, the Constitutional Court told her again that that contract is unlawful and that she's got one year to phase out, phase out cash payment services completely. But again, she dragged her feet. Again, she almost uh, took us into a crisis. She refused to really work with the post office. And what happened is we were left with a situation where a few months before this contract was supposed to end, she had nobody to pay out cash to 2.8 million South Africans. And so on an urgent basis, so I decided to go back to the court to again beg and say, please allow us to use cash pass paymaster services to pay out the cash. So there's really nothing to celebrate that the taxpayer today has to foot the bill for the former minister's incompetence, for her negligence. Um, so yes, I, you know, while I note the decision, it's really not, not a happy day. Ms. Van der Merwe, where then does this leave uh, Minister Dlamini? Has she got off scot-free? No, not at all. We must remember that today's ruling has only got to do with the uh, extension of cash master pay services, which happened in March this year, which was the six months extension to pay out cash uh, to the 2.8 million grant recipients. But you will remember that in 2017, when the Constitutional Court first ha had its first scathing um, intervention in terms of you know, the relationship between the state, between government and SASA and cash, cash master pay services, Judge Mkhweng Mkhweng launched a uh, investigation into, into her conduct and whether she's personally responsible for the SASA grant crisis. And that Section 38 inquiry, um, we haven't had the outcome of that yet. So she's definitely not off scot-free and I hope that once the court comes back with a ruling in that regard that she will be held personally re re uh, responsible for the crisis that we faced over so many years. It's also your wish, isn't it, that this is further investigated by Parliament itself? Yes, I've on numerous occasions written to the Speaker. Um, I think, you know, it's very important that we get to a point as Parliament where we have got a full inquiry, almost like the ESCOM type inquiry, into the relationship between SASA um, and Cash Pay Master Services. You will recall that just recently the uh, Salambosch University launched a report um, which detailed how um, SASA and Cash Master Pay Services captured um, that's well captured SASA and it was um, you, you know it details how government official how ANC officials were involved in this capture so there's no doubt that this relationship this toxic relationship that government has had with cash master pay services over so many years needs to actually be thoroughly investigated we need to get to the bottom of why Minister Batabile Lamini for so many years when the court told her on numerous occasions that the contract that she's holding is unlawful and illegal, that she was hell-bent each time keeping this, uh, this, this company in place, uh, driving us to a crisis. So Parliament really needs to get to a point where we launch a full inquiry into her conduct and into the ANC officials and other officials that kept this toxic relationship going. What's your contention? What do you believe the relationship was then between the minister and CPS? Well, you know, of course, um, you know, if you listen to what some people will tell you uh, at Parliament or some people who've got, you know, intimate knowledge as to why, um, you know, government went with cash master pay services. And like I said, in this um, report that the University of Salambosch launched themselves, you would see that, you know, of, of course, it was a seemingly corrupt relationship between with some officials in the ANC that used CPS in, or in order to further their own political agendas. So I've got no doubt that CPS was was kept in place just like the Guptas had their own um, you know, hold on the state, that CPS had its own hold on some ANC officials and therefore was able to be able to stay in place as long as they did. But this is all supposition at this point pending an inquiry that you're calling for. 
Yes, of course. I mean, the fact of the matter is nobody would have um, really understood the extent of state capture had Parliament not investigated, had the media not stayed on it. And again, I'm saying that, you know, I don't think that CPS, Cash Master Pay Services, should be allowed to get off scot-free. Neither should Butterbeard at Lamini. And you must also remember that Cash Master Pay Services didn't only benefit from an unlawful contract. They made billions from the state with an unlawful contract. And it's also common knowledge that it's CPS that is responsible for the illegal deductions um, of grant recipients' accounts. So what CPS has been, you know, there's numerous documentaries, uh, different research that is showing that it's, it's subsidiary companies of CPS that is responsible for the illegal deductions that come of grant recipients' accounts. And they've not been held to account for that. They've not repaid one cent that they took illegally and unlawfully from any grant recipients. They continue to make billions from the state. And even now, as we sit on the eve of, of October when they should be phased out, already the Auditor General has told the Constitutional Court in its latest report to the Court that it's concerned as to whether Sasa would really be able to effectively, efficiently and economically be able to pay out social grants as they should finally be doing so from 1 October. So what's the alternative as we get closer to October then? Well, there's no alternative. The, the fact of the matter is Sasa dragged their feet for, for many, many, many years. Um, in order to get to a point now, you know, this, this crisis should not have been there had Minister Batabilet Lamini previously done as she had been expected to do. So at this stage, the Auditor General is simply saying that it's concerned that uh, Sasa might not be able to, to, to pay grants on time again on the 1st of October. But one is hopeful that they will be able to do so. The only, the only thing we need to see now is for cash master pay services to exit finally, that there's no more un, you know, undue delays in keeping them in the picture. We need them out of the picture. We need them gone for good. We need the post office to be capacitated so that they're able to pay out grants. We need um, SASA to work efficiently. And, and hopefully, I'm hoping that the new minister is on the ball and that she's working on ensuring that come 1 October, grants are paid on time to our beneficiaries. But it's a worrying situation because uh, the post office itself is uh, dealing with capacity issues in that regard, isn't it? Yeah, the post office has had its own struggles, but I, you know, at this stage, like I said, they have taken over, the post office and SASA have taken over, you know, 90% or more of the work that needs to be done. So it's only, they were only left now in the six months to phase out the cash payments to, to which cash, cash pay master services is still handling. So the plan that they had various plans, for example, um, such as bringing on board as many grant recipients onto a new card. Um, so hopefully come 1 October, as many recipients will be using their new card and only a few uh, grant recipients will still be relying on cash and those will be mostly in the rural areas. But of course, one is aware of the post office's constraints, um, but I think they've done good work in terms of trying to, to up uh, their capacity and, and, and to get themselves ready to, to do the job uh, fully um, as, as they require. To All do. right, thank you very much indeed. Elise van der Merwe, Member of Parliament for the Encarta Freedom Party. This